Well, greetings, everyone. Hi, my name is Vicki Evans. I am with the Red Cape Company, and I am today's web uh, moderator for today's webinar, Tricks of the Trade for Personal and Executive Assistants. I have a few housekeeping slides for you before we get started. And first of all, for those of you that are currently on the call and um, are on the webinar watching live, you may use your control panel, the GoToWebinar control panel, do a couple things. Number one, if, you, if it's taking up too much space on your screen, you can collapse your control panel using the orange arrow that's on what's called the Grab tab. Here's a, a large uh, view of the, the Grab tab here. And then what we'd love for you to do is submit your questions. We are going to have a 15 minutes questions and answers period at the end of the session, but highly recommend that you um, go ahead and send in your question throughout the session. It could be on any topic. It could be on something that we're covering during the webinar. It could be just a general question um, for Bonnie or myself. So feel free to take advantage of um, asking a question during the session. We highly um, encourage that. For those of you that are on Twitter, we have a hashtag for this event. It is Ultimate PA. Ultimate PA is the hashtag. And if you'd like to follow those that are tweeting about the about the session, you can follow that on tweetchat.com slash room slash ultimate PA. If you find a helpful tip that you want to broadcast out to your followers, you know, we certainly welcome that. So feel free to do that. And um, stay tuned to the end of the session. We, both Bonnie and I, um, are authors of books, and we will be raffling off a copy of our book. And so I will give you information at the end of the session how you can enter to win a copy of the book. And then as far as our agenda, we're going to do just brief introductions about ourselves for those of you that, that aren't familiar with what, we, what Bonnie and I do. And then Bonnie will, um, will present the tips and tricks of the trade for personal and executive assistance. And then I will present a 15-minute technology and productivity tip session, section. And then at the end, the last 15 minutes, will open up for questions and answers. Again, my name is Vicki Evans, and I'm the founder of the Red Cape Company. I'm actually based in Austin, but today I'm broadcasting live from the, from the gorgeous, a beautiful day in New York City. Um, I am a Microsoft instructor. I've been teaching for 15 years, and I'm also a Microsoft partner. And I get to travel the country delivering tips and tricks presentations and hands-on classes to assistants and their executives in large teams. And uh, I am happy to, and, and it's actually my honor to be part of the team and teaming up with Bonnie Crayman. So everyone, I'd like to introduce to you my colleague and friend, Bonnie Lowe Crayman. So Bonnie, would you mind uh, taking the floor? Well, hello, everyone. I am so excited to be here. And thank you, Vicki. Um, thanks, everyone, for taking time out of your busy schedules to spend this hour with Vicki and me. I know that we have many colleagues and friends listening in right now from all over the world. And that confirms, once again, that the best assistants, no matter how many years you've been doing this work, you are always seeking to learn and grow. And that impresses me every time. I am Bonnie Lowe Crayman, and I worked for 25 years as the personal assistant to actors Olympia Dukakis and Louis Zorich. And now I am taking a different but related direction, and I'm following my passion to design and teach workshops for personal and executive assistants to fill the need for training that I've heard and felt for years. Biggie and I designed this class and this webinar because we are both passionate about education and empowering assistance, uh, and there's been so little training available until now. Today's webinar is a small sampling of the material that we cover in our 14-hour weekend intensive workshop for assistance, and we're taking that to cities around the country. In May, we're headed to Dallas on May 5th and 6th, and Fort Lauderdale on May 19th and 20th, so we really hope that some of you will be able to join us there to continue the learning. Our goal for the weekend class and this webinar is to create a solid learning experience in both the soft and hard skills needed to excel as an assistant these days. 
And because technology is such an important part of an assistance work, we are all so fortunate to be learning from the best in the business. It really doesn't get better than Vicki Evans. So for this, and you'll be hearing from her later in this hour, for the next hour or so, we will be presenting some of our favorite tips from the workshop. From the beginning of my career, I was painfully aware of the lack of resources specifically for assistance. And which is, as you well know, it can be a very isolating job. Olympia and I would solve problems one at a time, and I remember I couldn't help thinking there has to be a better way. Searching for resources and that better way led to helping to create NYCA, New York Celebrity Assistance, and I know we have some uh, members listening today. Welcome. And that led to writing my book, be the ultimate assistant, and then speaking at lots of presentations around the country, all having the same goal as this webinar, to share solid, useful information to help assistants do their work better and happier. You will understand my need for resources when I tell you about 1988, which was the year Olympia won the Oscar for Moonstruck. She helped her cousin Michael run for President of the United States. And I was pregnant with my son, Adam. And as Olympia's assistant, we did all that without a cell phone or a computer. And the fax was down the street at the local copy store. Looking back, I still think that if I survived 1988, I can survive anything. And it's these lessons that I want to share with our students. Uh, I sure am glad that I have a lot more resources now, though. So grab your notebook and let's get started with tip number one. Since assistants are famous for putting themselves last on their list, tell the truth, don't you? Tip number one is to put yourself at the top of your list. And I learned this one the hard way. To be the best you can be in this demanding job, you need to rest and renew. I'm serious. I speak with assistants all the time who tell me that they haven't taken a vacation in years, and I know there's at least one listening right here to this, right now at this webinar. That's not okay. Burnout is a real occupational hazard in our work. Schedule and actually go on that vacation you've been meaning to take. Get a massage, see your therapist, go shopping to buy things for you, or take time to work out. Whatever it means to put yourself first, if only for a short time, do it. I remember I would defer vacations until a quote-unquote better time. Trust me, the years fly, and there is no better time in the life of a personal and executive assistant. Taking a breather and taking care of you helps you come to your work each day with energy and focus. Making yourself a priority shows respect for yourself, and you will see your employer respect you for taking care of you. When you are at the top of your game, this not only serves you, but it serves your employer, and that's why it's my number one trick of the trade. This tip, get human, is from our creative problem solving segment of the workshop. Any assistant who has ever gone crazy trying to get through endless call routers at places like the DMV or the phone company or your credit card company, here is one brilliant website, gethuman.com. Give it a try and see for yourself. What you do is you type in the company and it gives you the phone numbers to call to reach a real live breathing human being. To me, this website is right up there with the GPS as a genius invention, and it's going to save you a lot of time. And here's a bonus tip. Uh, for anyone who drives a car anywhere in the United States or Canada, here it is. The website is bestparking.com. On the website, you can uh, search parking garages, street parking in any city in our country or in Canada. It is brilliant. You get discounts on certain parking garages. It's a fabulous user-friendly website, and I use it for New York City all the time. These next four tips we discuss in the travel planning segment of the workshop. 
And if your employer travels a great deal, or if you travel a great deal, these tips are lifesavers and such a help to all assistants. Um, these are all uh, used by my colleagues at New York Celebrity Assistants. Uh, let me say up front that none of them, none of the people with these websites are paying me to say these things, although I'm, you are welcome to tell them that I referred you when you contact them. I'm recommending them because they have all saved me on many occasions and they will do that for you too. The first one is an airport greeter service. What a brilliant idea. Airport greeters are even better than having you at the airport with your employer. Here's how it works. For the cost of about $100, depending on the airport, a greeter will meet your employer curbside after communicating with the driver of the limo and will guide your employer through the whole airport process until he gets on the plane. The greeter has security clearance so he can cut the lines and cut the red tape. The greeter is especially useful if there are delays or if the flights get canceled. They know all the airline personnel so your employer gets to sit comfortably in the VIP lounge with a cup of coffee while the greeter handles all the paperwork with the changes. On the inbound, the greeter meets your employer at the gate. I mean, you could never get to the gate because of security. And the greeter stays with him until he and his luggage are safely in the car. It is worth every penny. Olympia just swore by greeters in these recent years. Linda Ripple has greeters in most airports in our country, even though she herself is based in California. There are other greeter services out there, but I can, re I can recommend Linda without question. Now, even though it's so easy to book travel online these days, there are times when a totally connected and experienced travel agent is your be better option. If you have to plan a multi-step trip for your employer, save yourself a lot of aggravation and go to the expert. Jason Miller has powerful connections all over the world and will make upgrades for hotels or flights happen with an email or a phone call. He is essentially a concierge for anything related to travel. So it is not just hotels and flights. It's cars and restaurants, honeymoons and safaris, all with a personal touch. And they, they issue this detailed itinerary, um, and it's terrific. Jason and his company work with clients all over the world, and he'd love to hear from you. One example of the kind of things they do is the employer who wanted a multi-city vacation where she stayed in five-star hotels part of the time and the rest of the time she wanted to travel in a motorhome and stay in campgrounds. Now, one of the challenges was where to park the motorhome when she was at one of the five-star hotels. Jason's company organized the whole thing from beginning to end. They're on call 24-7 and seriously will work with you and your employer on travel small and large. It, working with them is totally worth all their, the nominal service fees. Oh boy, I remember all too well the phone ringing and it's Olympia sounding depressed and saying to me, the car isn't here, the dreaded words. She, in our 25 years together, she took hundreds of flights and so when she'd call and I, she'd say that, the car isn't here, that sentence became one of my most unfavorite to hear, and I was determined to figure out how to never hear it again. I learned the hard way that cheaper is not better, especially when it comes to a limo service. Reliability is what you want. Drivers who actually know where they are going is very important when the last thing your tired employer wants to do is give the driver directions on how to get her home. I was determined to find that company that was utterly reliable, and I have two. Uh, on your screen, you'll see Attitude New York, and uh, Jeff's company it deals with New York City only. And on the right side is Ready to Roll. Uh, Gail runs a terrific company, and she has cars all over the country, uh, and uh, I trust them both implicitly. 
so you can definitely count on them. One last tip on travel, actually two. The U.S. government has a relatively new service to speed your employer's way through customs when they re-enter the United States. For $100, Global Entry will do a background check on your employer through an online application process that takes a week or two, or sometimes more, depending. And once that is done, there will be no more standing in line when they come back into the United States. They will just go to a kiosk uh, run by Homeland Security where their passport will be swiped. What a time saver. And get this, if you pay with American Express, Amex will refund the, the $100. So if you travel, you and your employer travel internationally, you will definitely want to check out Global Entry gov. Yeah, we have that on there. Now here's a bonus tip. If you have ever had to get a passport renewed or replaced overnight, you can do it. This happens to be one of those problems that assistants know that, that gets solved when you throw some money at it. Here's the website. You'll need to write this down. It's easypassport.com. It's easypassport.com because you never know. Got to keep that passport valid. Okay. In class, we cover organizational skills as critical for every assistant. It's certainly top of the list uh, in a job description. This is one of those tips. Many of you are probably familiar with the P-Touch labeler, which makes neat and clear stick-on labels so that you don't have to keep on opening boxes to figure out what's inside if you label it clearly. It's just one of the many tools designed to make an assistant's life much more organized, whether it's boxes of books, memorabilia, files, shoes, or jewelry. It's important that you're able to put your hands on anything your employer wants within five minutes or less, unless, of course, it's stored off-site. Clutter is an assistant's enemy. Everything needs a logical home. Those piles are awful. Things, the devil lurks in those piles, right? The time you spend solving where things get stored will definitely serve you in the end. And uh, on the right side of the screen are some of our favorite websites for finding the tools that you need to organize yourself, Gracious Home, the Container Store, and one of my favorite staples. Every assistant you, uh, loves office supplies. That's certainly a common denominator. Uh, here's a bonus organizational tip that was shared with me by a uh, career coach. And, and I have one right in my office. If the months fly by for you, and it, it's now April, and it feels like it should only be February, her suggestion was to buy one of those laminated and erasable two-year calendars to hang in clear sight on your office wall. It's too hard to think about the big picture of your life and your employer's life on, on a smartphone or the even the iPad calendar. On a big two-year calendar, if you put it on the wall, it becomes kind of like the big storyboard of the next two years. And fill in everything you know, birthdays, holidays, you know, Thanksgiving, when Christmas lands, and it will be much easier to schedule in that vacation that I'm encouraging you to take. Well, it's impossible to work as an assistant and not blow it from time to time. Some of the most powerful lessons of my career have been when I've made a big mistake. In class, we share these kinds of experiences. I could tell a dozen stories, but the doozy that stands out is from the time that Olympia was going off to give five speeches over eight days in different cities, and I was not traveling with her. Um, of course, it was my job to coordinate with each city and plan the travel, and each city had a file. And off she went. And I remember coming in on the morning after speech number three, and I saw Louie and said, oh, did you talk to Olympia? How did it go last night? And he gave me a funny look, 
and he said, well, I think there were some problems last night. Maybe you better give Olympia a call. Ah, to those of you who are listening, you'll, you can relate to that feeling in the pit of my stomach that happened from knowing something bad was about to happen. So I did call her on the phone, and she said, Bonnie, you gave me the wrong speech. Well, turns out she had given the acting speech, and she should have given the women's speech. You know, she gives different themed speeches, um, and she told me that uh, she had a clue from the uh, reception before the event where she had met some of the people, but on stage she just decided to change gears and she winged it, which is totally testament to how smart she is. And I'm very grateful there was no yelling on the phone, but mainly what Olympia wanted to know was that the remaining two speeches were correct, and I assured her I would reconfirm everything. Um, from that situation, I remember thinking, well, with this kind of mistake, it only, my rule for myself was it only gets to happen one time. So we discussed it calmly and we got through it. The trick to dealing with mistakes is to not let them stop you from moving forward. Well, okay, they do stop you for a short time. They're, they're hard, but the, that's the nature of this business as an assistant. They're going to happen. You can, uh, it's really important to deal with it, learn from it, and move on. Seriously, if we're famous for dwelling on problems, move on. We cover many aspects of communication in class, and one is about the importance of speaking up. The relationship between you and your employer is a close one, and because of that, of course there will be communication issues. They're inevitable. As assistants, we have a responsibility and an obligation to speak up to our employers and coworkers. But this is difficult and sometimes impossible for so many assistants. This resistance to speaking up is one of the biggest problems that I see facing assistants. So it's really important that we tackle it. In class, we discuss how breakdowns in communications happen and what can be done. We talk about how, how to have those crucial conversations that can mean the difference between quitting and keeping and enjoying your job. One strategy is to ask for a meeting and to unemotionally and clearly assert what you see as problems and propose possible solutions. You can say things like, can we talk? I'd really like to work together on resolving the issues we have. Can we discuss them? Now, sometimes it's hard to find the words to say, so there's a book I'd like to recommend. The book is called Speaking Your Mind in 101 Difficult Situations by Don Gabor, G-A-B-O-R. Speaking Your Mind in 101 Difficult Situations. The book is great, and it, it provides actual words. I mean, that's, I know I'm speaking from personal experience. I know it is difficult, but it does get easier. I promise it gets easier the more you do it, and you will be respected for taking the initiative, um, and the relationship will change for the better. On the second day of class, we, just, we cover career management with a local recruiter, and we go over the process of looking for work. We discuss the ways to stand out as an assistant and to make it so your employer cannot live without you. All of these things need to be on your resume, things like, that are on the screen, like learning CPR, or knowing first, basic first aid, you can become a notary, uh, learn about social media, which is all the rage, of course. Uh, learn how to make a simple website or learn the other latest software that you're needing in your office. Uh, and of course, we'd love to have you come to our weekend intensive workshop. All of this supplemental training can make the difference between getting the job or not or getting a bigger salary increase or not. Well, the number one resource assistants have is one another. The computer and the internet is certainly number two, 
But for me, after in my long career, the number one resource we have is one another. To be able to pick up the phone, the click of an email, uh, to get the answers you need. Building a strong network of people who can help you. Joining a professional organization. Uh, the, the LinkedIn discussion groups are uh, just wonderful and, and such a great resource. Uh, I'm really enjoying, uh, on the screen I have a couple of some of my favorite sites that I subscribe to. Uh, I'm really enjoying the Harvard Business Review. It gives me some great ideas for, for teaching and, and for just, you know, this uh, functioning in this workplace in 2012. Uh, really liking the Career Real, Realism blog. And I do Google alerts for things like professional assistance and, and things that you're interested in. You can do Google alerts on and then uh, daily or however you set up your settings, you'll receive information about the things that you're interested in. And then on the right side of the slide uh, is about the importance of, of joining and participating a professional organization. I'm a member of DEMA, IAAP, NYCA. Uh, the, the main point is that it is very important to share, generously share information between colleagues. It makes every assistant better and elevates the profession. So now Vicki is going to uh, present. Technology is such an important part of our work. So Vicki is going to be sharing some great technology tips to make you more productive. Vicki? Great. Thank you so much, Bonnie. And um, I, that, those were such helpful tips. Even I'm thinking of like writing down the, the, uh, the different links. And I know that there were some questions that came through the Q&A panel. And those of you that are asking about getting a copy of the slides, we will definitely send out a copy of the slide deck to you so that you can have all these slides available. Additionally, we will provide all the links that we are referencing during the session. So if you didn't capture a specific link, um, we will send that in a follow-up email to you. So, um, so hopefully you're able, able to relax and sit back and you know, take some notes, but, but don't get overwhelmed with trying to capture everything. We'll certainly send that to you. So thank you very much, Bonnie. Uh, the next segment is going to be focusing on my favorite, my top three favorite features of Microsoft Office. And I know that some of you are on PC and some of you are on Mac. So I picked three of the features that are, um, that are available on both platforms. And I'm going to start first with Word. I will show you one feature in Excel that I love and then a feature in PowerPoint that all, you know, all three of those different features will help you save time in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead and escape out of my screen so I can start in a Word document. And I will show you, so I'm, I'm using Office 2010 on the PC, but I will definitely show you what it looks like on a Mac. So I have a screenshot of, of what I'm doing. So here is a, a document, and this is a, a business plan. I'll go ahead and, and maximize this. And let me just double check the view to make sure you can see what you what I want you to see. Yep, looks good. So I have just a basic business plan and, and whether you're working in an employee handbook, a, a grant proposal, a, a project plan, they all have the same elements. They have a title to the document and then they have main headings and subheadings. So I'm going to be working on that type of format, a document that has a title, headings, and subheadings, and show you this new, well, it's not really a new feature. Styles have been around uh, since, since I've known Word, but in 2007 and 2010, they now are prominently displayed um, in the, uh, on the ribbon here that you can see on the screen, so these very large buttons on the screen. And all I need to do is click in my business plan and my title, and I look over here and I see these, there's actually a title style, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on title and apply the title style. And it's okay that it's, it formats it the way, the, kind of the out-of-the-box out format for this style. I'll show you in a second how we can easily change that. Um, so I formatted the title, now I'm going to go over to my main heading, and I'm going to apply my heading one style. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on heading one, and it applies like, font size and um, specific font format, 
um, and then color as well. Here's my subheading for my main heading, so objectives. This is also a subheading down here. So because objectives is a subheading for executive summary, then that means it's going to be a heading two level. So my main heading is heading one. My subheading is going to be heading two. So I'll go ahead and apply heading two. And so I can do the same thing for mission, heading two, and I scroll down. And here is another subheading. And I'll go ahead and apply a heading two to that. And this looks like a main heading for my document. So I'm going to go back up to a heading one style. And ownership is a subheading of company description. So I'm going to apply heading two. And like a cooking show where they have the casserole already made for you, I have already styled the rest of this document prior to class, so prior to the session. So you can see how the document looks using my headings and subheadings. Now, I've applied the heading, so what does that really do for me? Because you may look at this and decide, I don't really like that format, but that's okay, because applying the headings is the one step closer to getting the document to look the way you want. Over here on the right, you see this big button here called Change Style. So when I click on this button, there is this uh, feature here called Style Set. When I click on Style Set, I can click on Distinctive, and it actually reformats my the structure of my document. So these are saved uh, sets of styles that come with Word 2007 and Word 2010, as well as Word for Mac. And so I can sit here and go to Style Set and change it to Elegant. So there's that Style Set. I can change it to Fancy. So here's another one, and I can keep going down the list and changing it. So I recommend applying your styles and then coming over, and coming over here to change styles and choose a style set that you like, and then at that point you can modify your fonts. The other benefit of having a, a style document is if I go to my View tab on my ribbon and then click on the Navigation pane, I can see all my headings and subheadings and sub-subheadings here in my Navigation pane. And if you don't see anything on the left-hand side in your navigation pane, um, then that means your document has not been styled. So you'll want to definitely style your document so that you see your headings on the left-hand side. In 2007, as well as Office for Mac, so Office or Word 2007 for PC and Word 2011 for Mac, it's called the document map. So um, in 2010, it's called Navigation Pane, but in the other versions, it's called Document Map. So it's just that exact same thing. But in this version that I'm using right now, there's an added benefit of using styles and using this Navigation Pane. I'm going to go down here to Competitive Comparison, and you'll notice it has a table here underneath this paragraph you can use a navigation pane to move content within your document. So as I scroll down here, I might decide competitive comparison needs to, be go, needs to go underneath market needs. Rather than click, hold, and drag and cut or copy it down there, I'm going to use the navigation pane to move it. So watch my left side of my screen. I click, hold, and drag competitive comparison and then drop it underneath market needs. And that way I see it here below market needs, and it also brought in my table that it had underneath there. So lots of different benefits for using styles. Um, I don't have time to go over all of the benefits. I mean, another one is, is being able to insert a table of contents, uh, but I just wanted to kind of give you a preview of some of the things that styles enable you to do in, in Word. So I highly recommend um, investigating the whole styles feature in Word 2010, as well as the, the other versions. So let me just go back and show you a screenshot of the styles ribbon. So in Office 2007 or Word 2007 and Office 2010, this is what the styles task pane looks like. And in, if you're on a Mac, your styles look, uh, task pane looks like this. You'll see the, the group called styles here. You'll have to click on that arrow and then you'll see your title and your heading styles. So you have the ability of applying styles in um, either one of those platforms. Okay, so let me go jump over to Excel, and here I have an Excel spreadsheet, and what this is, it is a list of registrations for my event. So I see that it has an email column and a names column, address, city, state, zip code, and it also has a column for RSVPs. So this is fabulous. The only thing is I, um, I don't want to spend too much time formatting this, 
and I want to quickly be able to um, use the data and read the data um, as I do my job, as I, as I work throughout the day. So w the best thing to do in, and this was introduced in Excel 2007, is to use the format as a table. This is the feature I tell in all my workshops. This is, this is the feature that I want to marry because I'm so in love with this feature. If you click on format as a table, and, and notice where I'm clicking. I just, I just clicked on any cell within my list here. And I see I have all kinds of options here, but first I just want you to focus on what the table does. So I'm just going to pick the very first style here, the very first one, keep it black and white. And then um, be sure that when you say format as a table that if your list has headers, that you check this box here that your table has headers, and then click OK. And that way it offsets the, the header row for you and it provides the auto filter. So notice what it did. It gave me my auto filters and I didn't have to turn that on myself manually. It automatically did that for me. It also gave me my alternating rows, my banded rows is what they're called. And notice on the on the ribbon now I have this new table tools design tab. So this is now available to us. It's called a contextual tab. And this is now available to us with all the different features and functionality that I can turn on and turn off for this table. If you click outside the table, that, that ribbon, the contextual ribbon, goes away. So if you click back in the ribbon, you'll get that, all those tools back again. So one of the things you can do while you have the ribbon here is click on total row. So I just clicked on total row here. And if you'll look at the bottom of list, it automatically gave me this this great row, and then when I click on any one of the cells, I get this drop-down box. And lo and behold, I can actually say, okay, I want to sum, well, I don't ever want to sum the zip code, so I'm going to count the zip code. I might want to sum the RSVPs. Perhaps I want to count. I want to count how many RSVPs we receive. So I know 138 registrations, people coming to our event, but how many people RSVP'd? So how many of our invitations did we receive an RSVP for? So I could say count. So 92 of our, 92 of our guests RSVP'd, and we have a total of 138 attendees. And then I could do the same here. I can count um, that column and this column. And any time I remove any type of data in my list, it will automatically update for me in this total row. So I'm going to control Z that because I would never do that. So that's adding a total row. I also have the ability to turn off my banded rows. So if I uncheck a banded rows, notice my, um, my alternating gray rows disappear. So I can turn that back on and turn them off and turn them back on and turn them off. Disco, woohoo! Um, and then I have my header row. Um, it's easy to entertain me, by the way. Um, turn off my header row. I can make my first column stand out my last column stand out, or I can make banded columns if I need to. So lots of flexibility in using tables. I can also make it look pretty. So I can kind of make it, let's say I like green. So I can do green this one or green that one. I'll do this one here. So that looks good. And the only thing I did was I clicked on that one button that says format as a table. And I got all of these features um, to, to use with my little list here. The other thing I want to show you is that when I add any columns next to it, if I add a notes column, notice it brings it into the definition of the table. Same thing with my, um, at the bottom of the list, if I add any rows. So let me go ahead and remove my total row. And if I add, let's just put my email address here. Notice that it brought in the new person in this list as well. So now this person has been added to the list. So lots of great features um, for using tables. Um, I don't have time to show you all the features, but I did want to introduce the concept of formatting your list as a table. And you know what, real quick, let me look at my time. I do have one second to, to show you something. I want to show you, uh, this is an event budget. So it's an event budget, uh, just a, a sample event budget for a spring fundraiser. And I'm going to click over here. These are my site expenses. These are expenses involving decorations. 
um, expenses involving refreshments and so on. But watch how I could leverage tables for something like this, as I can format as a table. And this time I'm going to uh, maybe pick blue. And my table has headers. And click that and then click OK. And I could do the same thing for here, say format as a table and click this option here. My table has headers and click OK. I can do the same here. And so look how nicely this budget looks. Say my table has headers. And notice this one here, it didn't give me estimated and actual because I didn't have any text in these two cells. But watch this, if I type in estimated and hit tab and actual, it automatically expands the table for me. So I can continue going on and adding a little bit more tables in here. And the great thing about this is if I decide to delete a row, suppose I need to delete drinks, you would expect site staff over here to delete, but because it's a table, I now have three rows here, I still have the four rows here. So I invite you to um, spend some time working in tables, investigate that, play around with them. And uh, this is a screenshot. I couldn't fit all of it on one page, so I had to make it like three-dimensional here. Uh, so that's what it looks like in Windows. If you're using a Mac, what you'll do is you'll go to the Tables tab, and then on the New button, you'll say Insert Table with Headers. So that's how you do that with the Mac. And the last thing uh, I want to show you is in PowerPoint. Let me go back. Well, I am actually in my presentation. So let me go to this slide here. I have some... Um, average learning retention rates. And you can see that there's a gradual increase in retention based on um, what the format is for, the, for learning. So if you're just watching a lecture of Bonnie and me presenting this information, you would only retain about 5% of the content. However, if you took that information and taught, you know, tech, took whatever you learned from that lecture and taught it to someone else, you would learn up to 90% of that, of that content by teaching someone else. So I think a better way to represent this information rather than place it into bullets is actually have a, a visual diagram. And we could use what's called SmartArt. SmartArt was introduced in Excel uh, or in Office 2007. So it's available for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, but mostly people use it in PowerPoint. The best way, easiest, and most efficient way to do this is just highlight your bullets, right click, and then say convert to smart art. And I could hover over one of these and I could see kind of a preview, but it may not be representing correctly over the uh, rendering correctly of the webinar. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick um, my pyramid here, my triangle, so you can see the gradual increase in retention as I get further down the, the pyramid. And once I, once I have this turned into a converted into smart art, I now have this contextual ribbon. I have two tabs up here, and I can choose you know, a different layout, one of these other pyramids if I want. And I, I can go to a different layout if I decide to. Uh, let's look at that. That's probably not going to re represent the information as well as the, the pyramid, but you get the picture. It looks just a, a whole lot better than using just a strict bulleted list um, on the slide. I can also change colors. This color scheme, I don't really have a big color palette, but I could also use uh, kind of some different effects for these, for the smart art. And I'm actually going to turn it back to my triangle because I think it represents it. Um, I've actually called a pyramid here. And then click OK. OK, so that is smart art. Let me show you where that is. So what you would do is highlight the bulleted list in your slide and then right click and say convert to smart art and you could pick any one of these here or, or click on more smart art graphics. In, on, on the Mac, if you're using the Mac, what you would do is you would highlight your text like you see on the screen. So the coffee life cycle is plant, harvest, roast and grind. You would highlight your bullets, click on the smart art graphics tab and then pick on one of the, pick, not, don't pick on one of the categories, pick one of the categories like list and process and cycle um, and pick one of those and then, and then choose the smart art. So, so those are the top three features that um, are my favorite features in Office, in the Office system. So I highly recommend um, investigating that and, and testing those out. So um, I am going to go ahead and turn it on over to Bonnie. I think you've been monitoring some of the questions. 
And um, but before you do that, before I, we open up for questions, you wanted to address how we can learn more tips and tricks of the trade. Is that correct, Bonnie? Uh, right, 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 right. And actually, um, Vicki, we did get a question okay. um, from one of our listeners about if you can go back to about the big buttons. What about okay. the the big buttons, and, and this is really how we function in class, that Vicki does a two-hour session on technology, but it's so interactive, and the students get to choose um, and, and ask any and all questions that they have. So the question has to do with the big buttons. Why are the big, where are they? What is it? Vicky? What is the big buttons? <laughs> so there's, uh, yeah. so what there are, are they? Yeah, what are they? Why are they there? So the, the reason why we have big buttons on the ribbon is, um, there's a t statistic out there. It's it's when Microsoft receives requests for new features in the software. So when people write in and say, "Hey, Bill Gates, can you add mail merge to Word, or can you add pivot tables to Excel?" They analyzed all the requests that came in for new features for Microsoft Office, and what they found was that only six percent of those requests that came in were for features that were not in the software. So that means that 94% of the feature requests they received were for requests that were, were for features that were already in the software. 94% was they were already in the software. So here's my theory of why Microsoft created these big buttons, and I call it the big button alert. And I think this is Microsoft telling us, hey guys, knock 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 on their screen. Here, here are the styles that you've requested. You re you requested us to create styles or have a styles feature in Word. It's been around for a long time. It was just hidden in, in menus and submenus and submenus and sub 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 menus. That now they surfaced it, made it really big. And one of the things I recommend as my you know one of the tips is, if you see a big button, go go press it, go do something with it. That's Microsoft knocking on your monitor, your screen, saying knock 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 knock. You know, hey, go check it out. So um, hopefully that answers the question. <laughs> I'm not sure how succinctly, but yeah. hopefully. Any other questions from technology perspective? Uh, there, um, there were just many comments similar to what happens in class. Like that was amazing, Vicky. That's incredible. Uh, I, my whole life is better because of it. Oh, good, <laughs> so, good. I'm so glad. Yeah. So let's uh, let's talk about how they can learn more tricks of the trade. I know you're going to um, speak a little bit about this. Right. Um, so as I said earlier, Vicki and I are about to hit the road to take our 14-hour workshop to different major cities. Um, and we actually had a comment from uh, Bobby asking if we're going to Toronto. And as of now, Toronto isn't scheduled for 2012, but uh, let's talk and see if we can get that going, either if not for this year, then certainly for 2013. We'd love to go to Toronto, wouldn't we, Vicki? Um, Absolutely. Sorry, yeah, I was on mute. <laughs> is that your employer, <laughs> oh, oh, got it, um, you know, our hope is that your employers will pay for this training, or at least some of your employers will pay for the training, and invest in your professional development. Education is the best way to stay at the top of your game. Um, in, so you can see on the screen the cities that we're going to, uh, and in uh, September we're going, we're both speaking at the DEMA conference, and another comment was that, what does DEMA mean? DEMA is the Domestic Estate Managers Association. It is the professional organization that is the umbrella for all uh, people in private service. So personal assistants are, certainly fall under that umbrella. It's domesticmanagers.com. Uh, is the website for that if you're interested in taking a look. But we're going to DC and Chicago and Los Angeles and San Francisco. At the bottom of the screen are Vicky's and my websites. Uh, the schedule is included in bo on both those websites, of course. And over the weekend uh, that we're in each city, we do 14 hours, seven hours each day, 10 to five. Uh, the classes are small, highly interactive. Um, and uh, we really would welcome you there. So, um, Vicki, let's let's open it up to some more questions. Okay, can you hear me? Is that can uh, you hear this, me now? This session is being recorded. Yeah, the, okay. uh, this session is being recorded. I can hear you. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, the session is being recorded. So, um, 
you will have a chance to, if I went too fast on, on uh, bestparking.com, you'll have a chance on the, the recording. So let's go ahead, Vicki. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, the first question I see, and this is a, this is what I thought was going to happen because this was my first question too. If I'm, if I am indispensable, how can I take a vacation? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, ah, the, that's the tough. dilemma. Yeah. The big dilemma. It is tough. But here's the thing: it's about communicating with your employer. You know, hopefully, when you're hired. Um, it, it's part of the deal that you get X number of weeks vacation each year. And it is, it is important to involve your employer in that uh, discussion and conversation. So when it comes up, you don't have to solve this problem alone. He or she is in it with you. Um, and so I realize, you know, the, the very best assistants are indispensable, but it's important and it is to be respected that you need to take a break. It's not to say you won't have to check an email while you're away or check your phone or trust me, I have vacations. I'm pretty sure Olympia called me on most of them uh, to ask a question. But there, you can get coverage. Someone can cover for you, whether it's a family member, you hire someone to come in. Um, there are solutions, and my main piece of advice is to involve your employer in that process of solving the problem. You might be surprised. They're going to come up with some pretty great ideas. Um, great, Bonnie. So I've got another question for you, and uh, it says, I've been a PA for the last 12 years and am now looking for work. Do you have any resources for finding a new job? Oh, definitely. Well, it depends on what city you're in, but in most major cities there are recruiters who specialize in these types of positions. And it's so it's very important to connect with the recruiters who are doing this kind of work because what I have found, it's such a small business. I mean, there are 4.1 million administrative professionals in our country, but it's feeling because of the LinkedIn discussion groups and the blogs that we're all knowing who the others are. Uh, and so those LinkedIn has, is quickly becoming such a powerful way to connect each other and do, and network, networking to, um, to help find new jobs. And a caution though about social networking, really important to check the security settings and, and to monitor your social networking, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn. If you're looking for work, employers and recruiters most definitely are going on social networking to Google you, to look up, you know, to see the photos you're posting, to uh, read the way you're communicating uh, about yourself. So um, you're invited to connect with me uh, personally if you'd like to continue that conversation um, to the person who wrote that. And you can probably recommend a recruiter in their area as well. Right, oh, oh, most definitely. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Perfect. I'd be happy to. Perfect. We got some more questions. If you're okay. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's do it. Um, I someone asked about creating a table of contents, so I will show that in just a second. I'll show you how to create a table of contents real quickly. And um, hold on. <laughs> Lots of like, can you come to Atlanta? Can you come to to Seattle? <laughs> And um, we will, as long as you're on our list, we will be posting out new cities, and um, we certainly uh, welcome, we'd love to come to the city. And let's see, hold on, I thought there was one more question I wanted to, maybe I didn't see it, no, no, no. Okay, lots of, hey, I want a copy of the presentation and the links and things like that. So um, I don't see the other question. Let me go ahead and jump over to Word. And, um, okay, one came in for Good Flight Tracker website. Oh, Bonnie, you do have a Good Flight Tracker website. Um, it's part uh, of the, the packet, the appendix that we have during the workshop. We have lots of uh, links, and we can send out the link to the flight tracker that you recommend, right? Planning, yes, definitely. And I'm oh, uh, 
flight status. I like flightaware.com, flightaware.com, and there's also another one, flightstats.com, um, and uh, those will help you track your planes for your yeah, and we'll, employers. And we'll definitely email you the links to those, those websites. Um, okay, let me show real quickly. There's one question about how to create a table of contents and then a question about how to sort in Excel. And I'll show you that real quickly. So because I have my styles applied, my heading levels, one through three, I believe I have in here, I can go to my references tab on my ribbon. And then over here on the left-hand side is table of contents. And I could use one of the the built-in table contents here, or if I wanted a little bit more flexibility in how many levels of headings I want to bring in, I can go to insert table of contents and say, okay, I only want my first levels. So I want level one, heading one, to come in to my table of contents and then click OK, and then it gives me all my heading ones. So as long as you're using your, your title, subtitle, and your headings in your document, you have so much power. Um, you have so much power as it is as an assistant, you get even more power um, you know, managing your documents using styles. So that's how you create a, a table of contents in Word. And then the other question was, how do I sort in a table? And I'll go back to registrations. And because I get these automatic filter buttons here, I have the ability to sort A to Z, Z to A, so I can sort all my names. I can sort by address. And if I wanted to do multi-sort, so let's say I wanted state and then city, I would, um, I can click on, no, they don't have it here, on my home tab, sort and filter, and you would say custom sort. And that way you can say I want my state, and then add level, and then city. And you, you will all get a copy of this recording, so if I'm going really fast, it's only because we're, we're short on time, and, but you'll be able to get this um, in the recording. So state and city, and then click OK. So now I've got Alabama and then city here. And Bonnie, are there any other questions in there? Like, do you want to um, spend time on to share with everyone how they can win a copy of the book, of one of our books? Right. Uh, well, just really quickly, the Passport website is itseasypassport.com. Itseasypassport.com. So, Vicki, why don't you tell us how our listeners can win a book? Absolutely. Um, so, if you're on the call right this minute, um, we will enter each one of you into the drawing, so you don't have to do anything. We'll definitely send you a follow-up email with a link to the survey that we we'd love for you to tell us how how the session was. But you don't have to you don't have to complete the survey in order to be entered in the drawing. Just by being here to the end of the of the session, you're automatically entered. And so we'll we'll contact the the winners. One person will win a copy of Bonnie's book and a one person will win a copy of my 100 Tips in 100 Minutes book. So thank you very much for, for attending. And I'm going to, um, Bonnie, do you have any last words for us? Well, I do. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. The hour just flew. I uh, really love this quote. Final thought of the day. A person's mind stretched to a new idea never goes back to its earlier dimension. So I just want to tell you that I hope your mind has been stretched today to several new ideas um, based on our reaction that I think you have. And um, we look forward to hearing from you. Please do reach out. Help us uh, help us help you. So thank you and, and have a lovely, lovely day. Thank you so much, Bonnie, for sharing your uh, wealth of information. And with your 25 years' experience with Olympia, you've got some great stories and great resources. I'm definitely going to be leveraging, leveraging them. And so, everyone, thank you once again for attending today. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day. You may go ahead and, and exit the webinar. Thanks.